Hey there guys, Kyle with Dirt Bike Channel. Just wanted to kind of give a recap of what we're doing with this Honda bike. This is the MX bike that you guys asked for us to go out and find, find an older MX bike and then do some things to it to refresh it and get it more capable for off-road. So we've been doing a lot of those things. And every time we ride the bike, I find more things that I want to do or things that I want to change. Like for instance, after the ride of, that you're gonna see today, or at least the talking about after the ride that you'll see today, I knew that I wanted to install a flywheel weight and I wanted to change the gearing, which I've now done on the bike uh, in its form right now. Although we won't be talking about that yet because I won't have done it yet on the video today. Um, but I just wanted to recap, the reason why we're doing this is for you guys and it, it's for fun. Um, don't get caught up too much in the fact that we're comparing this to a brand new, uh, like newer KTMs and things, uh, because you know what? Those are the bikes that we have to, you know, compare them to. Sometimes we compare apples to apples. Sometimes we compare apples to oranges. Sometimes we compare oranges to oranges. And in this case, we are literally comparing a red apple to an orange orange <laughs> with the KTM. And it's okay. It's okay. In fact, Chuck Norris can pick an apple from an orange tree and make the best lemonade you've ever had. Think about that for a second. Okay, Sam, so we spent a couple hours riding these two bikes. Now, this is, this is the 2003 Honda that we um, kind of did a little bit of a review, well, a little bit of a kind of initial review on. You rode it a couple months ago while I was rehabbing my ACL, and you rode it out here in this area in the desert. Um, but that day, we were riding a little bit more open stuff. You right. really loved the bike. Uh, and then today is my second or third day back on the bike, or back on riding bikes after uh, rehabbing my ACL. And uh, I thought, I gotta give the Honda some love. So we brought it out here and we did a little bit more technical stuff today, didn't we? So yeah. la last time it was, just, it was just wide open desert, but yeah. we weren't more technical this time than normal. We were just more technical than last well, time. Than last time, right? exactly. So, and th this bike immediately, when I, when I got on it at first, I felt a little bit out of place. We did, we did raise the handlebars up a bit and we moved them forward with an adapter. Tyler hooked us up with that when he was riding the bike. Um, so that was a little bit better, but I still felt like I was, I felt like it was hard for me to stand up on the bike. I had a hard time being comfortable standing up on the bike. Did you, were the handlebars an improvement for you or did it you was a, definitely improvement, but still, um, I was hunched over and I felt uncomfortable standing up. So, which meant that most of the time you'd sit down, which is bad technique. <sighs> Well, I, some, of, some of the time sitting down is fine, right? When it's really tight and yeah. it's really turny, sitting down can be a really good thing to do. And I, I would echo that. I felt more at home on this bike when I was sitting. Yeah. When I was sitting down on the bike, I felt fine with it. But I'll tell you, my biggest uh, complaint with it, uh, and not that I want to start out with complaints. I, let, me, let me not do that. Let me, let, me tell you the thing, let me tell you the things I liked about it. First off, I liked that this thing has power uh, galore. Yeah, there, there's power. power. It, it, the power comes on like a house of fire too. And uh, you really, you really know when this gets on the pipe because it's just like there's kind of nothing there, nothing there, and then it's all there and it's in your face. It's like drinking from a fire hose. It it really is, and and that in and of itself can be kind of fun. So that so that was kind of fun. Um, I love the way the bike looks. I love the way it turned out, um, and I kind of love the way it sounds too. It's got this little bit different. Well, it's a quite a bit different note than what the KTM's have and the Betas yeah. have and the and the Shurkos and and the other ones that we've been riding. So it's a little bit different of a note. <laughs> Good looking bike, uh, so that's fun. And it's got new tires on it, or new, they've only got a couple hours on them, so that was good. There were some really good things about the bike. Um, some of the things though that I immediately didn't like, if I had to have this bike long term, uh, I would put a hydraulic clutch on it, especially when we swap back and forth, because this is a 2018 KTM 250XC, and when we swap back and forth, it was night and day. I did not like the hydraulic, or I did not like the clutch on this, and this is a brand new clutch cable. You yeah, know, so, but you really noticed it. Um, the other thing I noticed that you mentioned the last time that we did this video is this bike really does plow through, th plow through Plows things. Through everything. It wants to go in a straight line. Doesn't really like to turn. So when we wrote, when you wrote it last time, the sag was way down. Way too low. Way That's too much why sag. I could corner really, really well and it was fun, but and it is, but it ruined everything else. And it was sand, it was really sandy and just like flowy turns and, and it stuff. And it just rained so the grip was epic as it, well. It was great. Now, today we've got the sag set at 105 millimeters when we're standing, 110 millimeters when we're sitting, uh, which we did the same to this bike. And what happened is this bike just wanted to go straight. The Honda just wanted to go straight through everything. And I nearly killed myself 
about four times today because I about impaled myself into trees because I could not get this bike to turn. It wanted to go straight through everything and I about died because of it. In fact, there was one section of trail where we decided we were gonna swap back and forth, go up maybe a half mile, back a half mile, or it might've even been a mile, uh, both directions, and, and then swap over and do it with the, with the other bike. So I first went on the Honda with it. I'd been riding it for about 35, 30 minutes at, at that point. And, I, and it was right where the trail got a little bit more technical and a lot tighter. And I got to the end of that test to turn around and come back. And I was so discouraged because I thought I'd forgotten how to ride a dirt bike. I had a really hard time. And, and then we, we, we go back to the starting point. Uh, I was pretty discouraged. I get on this bike. And even though I hadn't ridden, ridden this bike for six months, this is, this is a bike that I... Um, used to have and then sold it to Sam. I only put like three hours on that bike, yeah, maybe maybe and four. I think 30 or 40 minutes of that was probably me. <laughs> yeah, so, as well. but I get on this bike and immediately I felt like I remembered how to ride again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's something to be said for being familiar with the platform. Holy. This bike is electric smooth and light and nimble and jumping. Holy sh Nikes. Woo! It was so much easier for me to pop the front tire, put the front tire wherever I wanted. On the KTM, wherever I looked, the bike just went. It felt more balanced. Whereas on the, whereas on the Honda, it felt like the front end is pushing down so much all the time that it just, uh, it just wanted to go in a straight line and the front just wanted to, wanted to you know, stay planted. I have a really hard time on the Honda getting the front wheel to feel light and I have a hard time getting the front wheel up. I feel like I have to anticipate everything I'm gonna do, which includes the braking and the acceleration and floating my wheel over stuff. I have to anticipate it about a half second earlier on this bike to initiate that move. Otherwise, I will just plow through it. Like for instance, you go through a set of whoops or you see one big deep whoop and I get on the gas with this and what happens? I plow into it halfway up on the other side. Versus on the KTM, I see that same, that same dip or that same whoop and I roll on the throttle and I float the front wheel right over it and set it on the other side. What did you notice when we swapped back and forth? What were some of your biggest takeaways? Yeah, so just to start like Kyle did, the things that I liked about the bike is I actually liked the bike. And a lot of the reason why is because I rode Honda. So I'm familiar with the, the platform, but um, it is a 15 year old bike and when you get in the really tight single track that's when you start to notice things so i liked it sitting down like it was fun i was a lot a lot slower on this than i was on that so it you know just doing my thing just kind of cruise and i i enjoy it and had fun and i you know i got it to jump a little bit and do some you know style it out a little bit trying to yeah, make it yeah i was riding behind sam and he looked like he was having a lot of fun on this because i i could stay when I was on the, on the Kato, I could stay right on his rear wheel and I was watching his body language and seeing how much fun he was having jumping off rocks and bumps. But on the granted, the tighter it got, the more technical it got, the worse it performed. And the faster it got, it started doing better and the more wide open it'd be, it'd do a little better. But those are the things I like. Yeah, like Kyle said, it's a beautiful looking bike. It has a cool sound. I liked it sitting down, just kind of putting around, not really pushing it really hard. Um, but to jump into the pushing really hard is the harder I pushed it, the, the less I liked it. And you know, that same concept of where the tire was so planted, but it was weird because when I'd be going downhill and I'd really have to bury it into a corner, I'd actually lose the front end because I was trying to turn so hard and it would basically want to roll under. And it might be because the brakes aren't as good. So I'm braking at the same time I normally would on this KTM. And so they, I needed to be braking a lot sooner. So I didn't like the brakes at all. If I own that bike, I would get new brakes on it. And I do a new hydraulic clutch as well. We did new brake pads though. These are new yeah, pads. It, it, but it's still just not, not near as good. And you know, you only notice it when it's a really hard, you know, downhill or turn or where you just need that, that, the bite in the front end that you get on a KTM that you don't, you don't see on the Honda. So, 
you know, that was one thing. And then the cockpit, the same thing, even with, you know, and this is a joke for Tyler. I'm going to send my bike to Tyler. He's going to put new stuff on it and just send it back and get extra goodies. But, you know, we appreciate Tyler doing that, but it, it helped the bike. But I still hated standing up on it. Like it just, I would have to basically have to try to force myself as far as I could back to get more room on the bike. If not, you know, I kind of look like I'm hunched over. I think it's some of the videos, I was, it looks like I'm hunched over, you know, like I have Quasimodo. But I think it's because of where the pegs are, to be honest. There's some truth to that. I, I feel like the pegs are higher up and further forward, and on the KTM, they're, they're lower and further back. Yeah. That's what I think. That's what my gut feeling tells me as I was riding it. Yeah, and we, I mean, we could put a tape on from here to there to see, but, but ultimately it doesn't matter because the bike, you, we had them back to back and they, it felt a lot squattier. So on the flip side, like if, you, if, you've, uh, if you're used to riding Hondas, you're, not, you're gonna like it more. Um, but as far as just being able to, like Kyle said, to be able to just say, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna stop thinking about it and let the bike just go where I go, it won't do that. It just won't. It will basically go where it wants to go. And a lot of times like, it's only in a straight line. So it's not unpredictable or weird. It's just that you have to plan way ahead on your corners. You have to, when you see a, um, you know, you see a obstacle, you can't just immediately switch directions. It, you know, I kind of have same the same complaints with like a big four stroke. That's the same, like a big 450. That's the same thing as I can't change directions as fast. That's a good, that's a and good that, comparison. To me, that's that's how it I just felt. feels like it's a bulldozing through everything. I hadn't thought of that. That's how I felt on this. I felt more like I was on a 450 four stroke on this when I got in the tighter stuff. And I hadn't, it hadn't even occurred to me, but that's exactly what I was feeling. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was the motors. Um, the motor on the Honda, there's plenty of power here. The problem is the power is only once you get into the pipe. There is very, very little low end torque which makes it hard to ride in the tighter stuff. Now we can do some stuff with the gearing, which I will. I'm gonna put a bigger uh, rear sprocket on this bike, maybe two teeth to gear it down a bit because the gearing is too high, but that isn't gonna solve the problem of, of the torque. I'm probably also gonna put like a, a flywheel weight on this to try to slow the revving down, but still, I don't know that that's going to help with the torque much. It's just going to slow the motor down to give me more traction because that is a problem on this bike. It's hard to get traction on it because as soon, as soon as the power comes on, bam, it comes on so hard, it just lights up the rear wheel. Contrast that to the KTM, what we noticed was the KTM had a lot more low end, a lot more low end, and the power was just so much more linear on the KTM, it was more rideable it was more usable. This bike, the way the power is for, for uh, single track riding, even desert single track like we were doing today, I think it's too aggressive. It's, there's too much of a hit all at once for you to be comfortable and have traction that you need, especially when it gets loose. This bike would break traction like crazy. And yes, I was too, I like to be in a higher gear when I'm going up some of this stuff, like in second gear. So the gearing, the, the fact that it was high geared wasn't really bothering me that much. It was the fact that I had no tractability, no lugability, no low end torque. Whereas on this thing, it felt literally like it was electric. And it felt, obviously it was so much smoother. You felt a ton of vibration in the foot pegs on yeah, the Honda, ton. ton of vibration in the foot pegs. You felt some in the, in the, in the hand, uh, through your hands as well. But you switch over to the, to the KTM, it felt electric, it felt linear, and the power was just there when you wanted it, but it wasn't too much to break the rear wheel loose. That's what I found. Yeah, this, yeah and where most things were, we would, I mean, you rode behind me in a couple of scenarios where, you know, it was kind of came around a corner and it was straight up and there was some rocks and sudden obstacles you had to kind of get around. And, and I was in second gear and second gear, even with clutching, it wouldn't pull it. Well, you were on the Honda at that the, point. Right in the Honda. And I was behind on the And um, so I had to shift to the first gear, but what happens is then I start to get to where I'd get power. I just light up the rear wheel. So what happens is I had to ride up that hill way slower than you normally would. Or Kyle, I could hear him right there in second gear. He could have passed me at any time, right? Because it's just, the gearing is just not right. And where the power is, it's all up on top and none down low. And, you know, where you, we ride of such a variety of terrain out here, it, it's, uh, it's not that great. If, it's, if you can get into a good rhythm of where it's just really flowy and there's not a lot of, you know, you know speed changes or, you know, elevation changes, rocks, obstacles, turns. It's just kind of like a nice flowy thing, like a motocross track, because it is an M-Bike. It does pretty good. Like when there was a couple sections, like, you know, you mentioned there was a, we were going up a drainage and it was just kind of more 
flowy and sandy. How did it do, do there? It did fine. It, as long as I didn't have to turn very much, the bike did fine. Um, and as long as I was going uphill, it did fine. When I was going downhill, I felt really, really skittish on, on uh, being able to keep the front end up. Yeah, that's it because- want, It wanted to tuck under on Yeah, me. you wanted to, and two, you wanted, it was wanting to plow into every bump in front of you. And when you're going downhill, that's scary. Yeah, it was wanting to smash through everything. So I felt like I was riding really down low in the, in the trail and feeling every bump on the Honda. Uh, whereas on the KTM, I felt like I was riding up on top of it and just really balanced. I just, it's hard for me to describe this guys, but I'm just telling you, it feels like there's a 50 pound weight on the front of that wheel when I'm riding it. And it just wants to stay on the ground on the front wheel. It feels like the bike is way heavier in the front and light in the back versus on the KTM, I feel like it's completely balanced. Yeah. And so it allows me to do whatever I want, whenever I want, easier to keep the front wheel light on the KTM. For me, it was next to impossible to keep the front wheel light on the Honda. It was just smashing through everything. But no which you what would think it would be, because it's a two stroke, you'd be able to wheelie it super easy. Well, right? and you can, you can wheelie it, but as soon as you wheelie it, then you've got so much power. You, you, to get to the point where you've got in the power to where you can wheelie it, now you're blowing the next corner and you're about killing yourself in one of these trees, which I did <laughs> multiple times. In fact, I had to stop as, as we were kind of three quarters of the way through our ride, I stopped and I said to Sam, I'm going to tone it down right now because if I don't take it down a couple notches, I'm not gonna make it back to the truck. I will be dead because this bike is gonna kill me. I'm, it, it, this is something that I would, it would take me a lot more time to get used to, much, much more time to get used to. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna like offend anybody, but I have had 27 different bikes-ish in there and I've ridden all of my friends' bikes. I've ridden every single bike. I haven't ridden a, a Gas Gas yet, but that will be coming. But every other bike manufacturer that I can think of, I've ridden at least one or multiple of their bikes. And I am telling you, I felt le the least comfortable on this Honda CR250R of any of those bikes. Now, I'm not saying I don't like it. What I'm saying is this was harder for me to get used to than any other bike I have ever been on. I can, I can think of one, one bike that I was equally as, dis, as, as uncomfortable. It was uh, somebody's bike who helped us out on the trail. It was oh, on like a 2015 a... KTM 450 SX that was yeah. set up rock hard suspension. He was a I, good dude though. I felt, I felt completely out of my element on that bike and I feel out of my element on this bike and we've got the suspension valved with stock. And yeah, and it's set up as close as to, to what we're, our weight is and everything. Yeah, so it, it sprung correctly. It's valve, it's valve for motocross. I mean, so anyway, and, and people are gonna say, well, you're riding a motocross bike. You know what? A lot of people ride motocross bikes out here. And I have had motocross bikes. Yeah. And we have friends that have motocross bikes and we ride them out here in the desert. And honestly, I, this one I'm more uncomfortable on than any of those bikes. One last thought that I did notice uh, is that the shifter, the shifter on the Honda is closer to the foot peg it's about an inch closer to the foot peg than it is on the KTMs. And so it's harder for me to get my foot under there to shift it up. Shifting down is fine, Yeah. but to shift up a gear, it's, it's harder for me to get my foot wedged you in there. jam it in there. It's not as so, easy. It, and it is, if you can see, look right here, you can see it. It's definitely, yeah. definitely closer. Yeah, so I mean, my, my last thought is just that it's a really cool bike. I love the way it turned out and we'll do some more things that will make it easier to ride as far as with the gearing, uh, as far as the sprocket and then the flywheel weight. Um, but it's not going to solve the major problems that I have. Um, my major, uh, um, uncomfortabilities that I have with the bike are not going to be solved by those two things. So that's what I will say. Fun, fun bike. I'm not as comfortable on it and it isn't nearly as well polished or well balanced as this 2018 KTM is. That's, those are my thoughts. What are your final thoughts? Yeah. Um, you know, out here in the desert, I like the bike. It's fun. It's not as good as these, the KTMs. Um, or this KTM in particular. So you can have a lot of fun on it. And so, you know, we, the whole point of this is to basically say, hey, look, you know, you can have fun on an older bike, but just, just so you know, technology has improved. And, you know, I, we don't want to discourage you from going and get a new bike, but it, where it's going to be terrible, because, you know, I only have one bike, so you have to make a decision on what bike you're going to buy. And it's this bike, it's this KTM, and the reason for that is because if I'm riding that bike in gnarly single track all the time, like we do, we ride gnarly single track all the time, we ride the desert, we ride everything, if, but if I had to ride that bike all day with my buddies that were riding these bikes, I would suffer majorly. Out here, 
I'd be able to keep up most places, right? You know, because it's more wide open, but like tight single track that we ride, the stuff that you see Tyler do and stuff, this would be terrible, horrible, and it would not be fun. You'd, it would just, you would hate the bike, your friends would just leave you. So that's something to think about as well. So when buying a bike, you know, it's like, where are you going to ride it? How are you going to ride it? Who do you ride with? You know, that doesn't mean you can't have fun. And like, I, I mean, for me, I like, buy whatever bike you can afford and have fun on it and set it up. But keep in mind, there are disadvantages of, of buying a bike like this, like a motocross bike and trying to set it up for, for off-roading. It isn't made for that. They didn't intend it ever to be that way. So you're basically taking steps back from what it's supposed to do, where like an XC or an XCW type bike or, or the X, like the, you know, the CRFX and the uh, YZX and the FX, the Yamahas and stuff, they're now purposely making a really high powerful awesome bike that's made for for off-road and they really are much better than a, a motocross bike for yeah. off-road yeah well thanks sam we're the, you brought up one other thing we're in this we're in this bike a lot of money now we yeah. bought it for eighteen hundred dollars but we are in it I'll, I'll roll up some of the footage that you guys have seen before we're in this like six grand um, and honestly we would have probably been better off to go out and find a two year old um a two-year-old like off-road off-road specific bike yeah no um, electric start and that's the thing you don't think about but that's actually something that really annoyed me on this bike for it, multiple reasons there was one time i was i had to kick it like six or seven times and by the time i got it started i had to calm my heart back down because we were <laughs> going to do a run-up something and i had to get had to get settled again so anyway thanks so much for watching if you like these videos please remember to uh share them with your friends like and subscribe i've got video i should have said this in the beginning maybe i will run it in the beginning i've got links down in the description for parts uh that you can um that you can buy if you go if you use my links it won't cost you any extra but it will help me this is the way i'm supporting my family now so please 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 use those links um that's pretty much it guys uh hopefully you learned something and uh, we'll catch you in the next video